The situation involving Chris Reed, Rick Joyner, and Morningstar Ministries is continuing to get more and more ugly. Words being exchanged back and forth now between Joyner and Reed over Reed's resignation, what Joyner said to Morningstar Fellowship Church during the Sunday, September 1st service about, you know, Reed's departure and how it was wrong on all these levels. And Joyner made a bunch of comparisons uh, with Reed and other individuals who we will discuss in this video. And now Chris Reed has responded to Rick Joyner in his own 40 minute video that he posted on his YT channel. You guys can go check it out there. But it's called, You Need to Know What's Really Happening. Chris Reed pointed out a lot of very interesting things in that video. And I'll be honest with you. I actually agreed with some of the things that Chris Reed said. Now, I don't agree with, you know, the relationship that Chris Reed had, of course, with Catherine. That was the other story to come out about this. You know, after Chris Reed had resigned from Morningstar, he said, of course, that it was because of the, you know, the mounting lawsuits against Morningstar and four John Doe's and a former youth leader who was arrested for some pretty bad things. And we know that Reed had stated that his reason for the departure from Morningstar was because he stands with those John Doe's. And he elaborated more on this video. So again, I don't agree with how the Catherine situation was handled. And, and I have spoke my piece on that. I will get to that more here in a little bit. But we're going to discuss here what it was that Reed said to Joyner in response to what he told Morningstar Fellowship Church. It's very interesting. We'll dive in in just a second. Before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, those interested, you want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see. I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. If you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, you have multiple ways of doing that. One by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You can become monthly contributors. I uh, would love for you guys to do that by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. And you can also help us out on our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video. Why did we create a GoFundMe? Well, this is to help out my wife and I with our stacking medical bills and uh, other bills that are piling up on us as we're just trying to keep the lights on at this point. My wife of only 39 years old suffered a stroke back in August. It was not because she took the juice. I always got to say this because people just make the allegations and, and say that that's what happened. We don't even know her. It was from uh, a vegetation buildup and endocarditis on her heart. A piece of that broke off to the brain, which caused the stroke. Doctors also determined that she had a clotting disorder on top of that, so she'll have to be on blood thinners for the rest of her life. There was a six-week antibiotic plan uh, to address the issue. However, after being in the hospital for a week and only being home for two days, she developed an allergic reaction, a pretty bad one, uh, that went from a rash to her being full blown up like a balloon. It was one of the scariest things that we had ever witnessed. She was back in the hospital again for another week. Uh, they switched the antibiotics around again and after getting out of the hospital for the second time, then she developed another side effect. This one was very scary, uh, much like the first, but it's uh, her, her muscles were starting to break down. She was in uh, agony as she described it. And doctors even said you could get that sort of a side effect from these antibiotics are really strong. Uh, so they pulled her off of that one. And so, uh, you know, we're just reevaluating treatment at this point. She's still going to be on the blood thinners. We have a rheumatologist involved now. Uh, so uh, she's she's got there's a road of recovery ahead and she's going to be out of work for a while. We don't know when she's going to come back. So uh, we just right now, we anything you guys could do to help us out through the GoFundMe or the Patreon or the Super Thanks on YT, it all adds up. So thank you guys again. And also your kind words and prayers, as I have shared with you uh, ever since this happened, as we're going through this time, um, you being right there with us and supporting us means the world to us as well as your kind words. So thank you guys again for anything you're able to do to help us out. All right, let's talk about it. Chris Reed, 
he put out a video called you need to know what's really happening reed talked about how he has been quiet since his departure from morningstar now i will highlight that reed did put out another video right after the resignation and he talked about Catherine. Of course, this is the relationship that he had back in 2021, in November and December 2021. Catherine was a student of Chris Reed's at the time. Okay, he remember Chris was married with six kids, right? And he entered into this, you know, relationship here, which was terrible uh, with what happened with Catherine. And, you know, Catherine had reported this to Morningstar leaders. One of them was Justin Perry, a former Morningstar pastor who actually had disputed the timeline from Chris Reed about how Chris Reed had talked about in his first video. He was delayed from becoming Morningstar CEO and president for 15 months uh, when, in fact, Justin Perry alleges that it was only a few months after Chris Reed had you know, been in this restoration period for what he had done with Catherine uh, to then becoming the acting CEO and president of Morningstar courtesy of Rick Joyner, who said at the time that he just wanted to see how Chris's behavior would be. Would he still behave badly or would he, you know, clean up his act, so to speak? And I, I've stated my piece on this, that if you are under any sort of a restoration, which I always question that anyway, uh, type of a plan, you should not in any way be given a, a promotion, so to speak, especially to be the CEO and president of a ministry. You just shouldn't at all. So, you know, Joyner admitted to that, and Justin Perry had said, no, it wasn't 15 months, it was more like three. And remember, he was given the acting CEO and presidency of Morningstar. And look, Joyner has had a history of defending this type of behavior from people like Reed before. I've talked about the Mike Bickle situation, IHOP KC. So Joyner has always been very questionable to me. Now, during that September 1st service, Joyner really tried to get, and I call this gaslighting, and I'll get to here in a second of why I agree with some of what Chris Reed said in his second video, but Joyner, you know, briefly mentioned the uh, pending lawsuits against Morningstar. Now, at the time, it was just one. That has now since grown to three, okay, involving the John Doe's and the former youth leader, you know, and all of the mistreatment that went on in that situation. It was bad, and it led to uh, that individual not only being arrested in 2023 for what he did, but also, uh, and his name is Erickson Lee, by the way, but also he was arrested again uh, only about just, just a couple of days ago. He failed to appear for his court hearing, okay, for this trial, and the John Doe's were all present, and so the judge had ordered another, uh, issued another uh, call for his arrest, which he then turned himself in the next day. So this situation is still playing itself out. So at the time on September 1st, Joyner, just talking about one lawsuit. Now they're up to three. Now, Joyner told the church that these accusations that they, you know, had discouraged the John Doe's from reporting what happened to police. He says it's all false. It's all false. But there are even some John Doe's in the newer lawsuits. And you can go back on my other previous videos where I talk more about this, uh, that allege that this sort of thing was going on at Morningstar even decades ago involving other leaders and then again telling no don't report what's happening you know to you at all we don't want to bring any sort of you know bad press here to Morningstar that's very concerning to me uh, now again Joyner attempted to you know make Chris Reed the focal point of that service and I said it at the time he's trying to make Chris Reed the scapegoat now based off of Catherine's story because prior to these lawsuits really starting to get attention, Joyner was kind of on the side of Chris Reed. Now, he didn't like the way he left the ministry. He said that it was not how a shepherd would act and look how it affected the church and look how it affected me, Rick Joyner. You know, he made it all about him. But Joyner, I said this, he was using the Chris Reed situation and the, the story with Catherine to deflect the attention off of him and the other Morningstar lawsuits. I said that. Now, again, I, I was not happy with how Chris Reed uh, you know, handled the Catherine situation. I think that it should have been reported publicly at the time that it went down. And I don't think that Chris Reed should have ever been elevated to the top of the ministry anyway. I think is what happened was a disqualifying act, plain and simple. I have nothing against Chris Reed as a person. I would never wish anything uh, bad upon him or his family. Now, unlike apparently some others are doing, and I'm completely against that. I always stand against that sort of thing. But I do agree that Joyner was trying to use Chris Reed. He said, you know, he was... 
You know, he lied to me. He lied to all of us. He was a wolf. I never would have elevated him had I known, as Rick Joyner said, evidence is starting to mount in the situation with him and Catherine. Okay. Now, let me get back to more of what Chris Reed said. Again, the video, you need to know what's really happening. Chris, and I'm going to kind of skip around here. You, you're free to go to his channel and check out his full 40-minute video if you would like to. But Reed talked. Let me, let me just mention the scapegoat thing since I'm on that topic. Reed talked about how Rick Joyner is making him the scapegoat in this situation, you know, involving what happened with Reed and Catherine. And I completely agree. He is definitely doing that. Rick Joyner is, is very crafty uh, as far as it is from deflecting attention of what's going on with him. Because Chris Reed even said in his video that Reed himself is not named. That's what he said in all of these lawsuits now that are pending against Morningstar involving the John Doe's. Reed said, I am not named at all, anywhere in there. And I don't, I, I believe he's right. I don't think that he is. Okay. But he said again that this was why I left Morningstar. It was because of the people, because Rick Joyner alleges that I turned my back on the sheep. He says, no, it has nothing to do with the people. He goes, I didn't leave the people. I left a corrupt and toxic ministry that it took me a year and a half to realize. Now, that's interesting. That is very interesting because, again, the, the mudslinging here between Reed and Joyner is continuing. Reed also called out the fact that Joyner had made a reference in his September 1st statement of Reed acting like Bill Clinton. Of course, you all know the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky situation. Reed says that in no way did I do, and he's talking about with Catherine, what Bill Clinton did. He goes, that is just completely false on every level. Again, he was not leaving Morningstar because of, you know, the Catherine situation, even though I think he should have at the time. But again, it's because he wanted to stand with the John Doe's and he did not appreciate the toxic and corrupt, you know, leadership, the whole, the whole structure at Morningstar. What I find interesting about that statement, and I'll, I'll say this, because if Reed had thought, or whatever he saw behind the scenes, if he thought that it was corrupt, and if he thought that it was toxic, then why did he even ascend? Or why did he even accept the position of CEO and president of Morningstar if, in fact, there was things going on there that he didn't like? Because he didn't have to accept it. But he said it took him a year and a half to realize it. I mean, that would, to me, indicate that there was little signs along the way in that year and a half that would have somehow prompted him to get out of there sooner, but he didn't. So I, just, I, I find that part a little interesting to me. Now, here was another big takeaway from what Reed said in his video. And I don't agree with this, as far as what Chris is alleging is happening to him and his family, that him and his family have been receiving threats. Ever since the, the whole story came out about his, his resignation, uh, he says that he's been getting weird text messages from people. And, and a lot of these people, his wife as well, a lot of these people he said have been offering to help him and his family, like get them to a safe place. He's even seen some of these people apparently parked outside of his house. And, you know, when Chris has talked about approaching the, the vehicles and they drive away. So I don't agree. You should not. Now, I don't care what you think of a person in ministry, but you should not in any way treat them like that. They don't deserve that. You know, don't, you know, don't do anything to, don't do these threats. Don't do these things to them. Okay. I am completely against that. If that's happening to Chris Reed and his family, that is 100% wrong on every single level. Okay. Don't do that stuff. All right, the family don't know it. They don't deserve that. No matter what Chris did, and I hope that Chris genuinely repented. I do. I really do. What I said from the beginning, though, about this whole thing is that, you know, to me, the only reason that Chris had even mentioned the Catherine situation was because the story came out in the Roy's report. This wasn't something that Chris had talked about in his original resignation statement. Catherine was never mentioned. There was no apology. There was no, you know, repentance in that first statement. It wasn't until the story came out in the Roy's report and then Chris did that first video and then he brought it up and then he apologized for it. And then he said, 
you know, he did things that he wasn't proud of. So I just said, you know, why couldn't that have been said in the original resignation statement? I think that if he had mentioned it, I, I honestly th think that if he had mentioned it, that he could have looked a lot better here. You know, you could mention still the lawsuits against Morningstar involving Erickson Lee and the John Doe's, but you could also say, you know, I wasn't perfect either. And when the story came out in that first video that Chris did, it was both him and his wife that really seemed kind of annoyed that it even came out. And they were like, you know, this was three years ago. Why is this coming out? We just believe this is now hurting our ministry. And look, these sort of things that are in the past that, you know, if they're not properly dealt with, they're going to come back out. They're going to come back up. Plain and simple. And uh, by the way, I will have, be doing another video because apparently Catherine did an interview uh after the Roy's report, where, where she gave her story about Chris Chris Reed and, and, and said some interesting things. So that, that's going to be in a separate video. I, I, this one I wanted to talk about Chris's response to Rick Joyner. So, uh, you know, Chris Chris claims that he's going to, you know, prove that, you know, this was, you know, something against him. Like, like Morningstar was against him. He even said this. Th this was another key takeaway from the statement, from the video, is that, Morningstar did everything they could to bury him. That's a, now that's a strong statement. You're talking about to bury him. I mean, they let him become, and I just, and I don't really know what that means. What did it, what's burying him? Is he talking about now po, post Morningstar? Because while he was at Morningstar, they still let him become the CEO and the president, despite what he did with Catherine. So I, I, I'm trying to find, and I'm again, I'm not supporting Rick Joyner. I, I, I you know, there's things from both of these guys that are very questionable and very shady. Okay. I'm just trying to bring you, present you guys both sides, give you my opinion on it. I, I think that Morningstar as a whole it is, I, I do agree with Chris Reed that it's corrupt, but you know, the, the two of them now, you know, kind of mudslinging at each other back and forth. It's almost as if they're both trying to deflect from both, you know, major situations that are going on here. The Chris Reed situation with Catherine and also you know, Rick Joyner and the stacking lawsuits against Morningstar, you know, involving the John Doe's. This whole thing is ugly. Like I said at the top, it's just ugly, right? Joyner doesn't want to do a third party investigation into the, the lawsuits from the John Doe's or Catherine. He said he doesn't believe in third parties. I'm not surprised by that. Joyner wants to do the investigating himself, which I think is a terrible idea. That should not in any way be done. You should never have, especially when you're involving this sort of heat on a ministry, you should never be conducting your own investigations. You need to have a, a you know, a, a trusted source like a grace to come in there uh, who has experience in this sort of thing in the church. Let them handle it. All right. You, you shouldn't be doing it because you want to talk about bias and everything else like that. You, know, you, you just cannot trust these people. So again, the, the whole thing is very sad, but what have we seen throughout all of 2024? Um, before that, but especially in 2024, God is continuing to expose the darkness, especially on big mega ministries. We saw it with IHOP KC. We've seen it now with Gateway Church and Robert Morris, many others, and now we're seeing it with Morningstar as well. What will come out next? That's the question. You know, this isn't the end. Right? There's probably a lot more to come forward on this. We'll see where it goes. I want to get your thoughts on it. You can let me know down below in the comments section. What do you think about Chris Reed's statement? Again, I did agree with some things, but there's some that I don't. And, and again, I just think this whole situation is ugly. Uh, but let me know what you all think. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute to the ministry with a donation, you can uh, contribute to our GoFundMe. That helps out me and my wife right now with our stacking medical bills or recovery from her stroke. Uh, you can become monthly contributors on Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, or hit that super thanks button on the YT video to make a contribution that way. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. 
The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.